Hello everybody and welcome to our educational series on the Load ecosystem. Today's episode will feature all about wallets and understanding where and when each wallet is valuable. Joining me today to help explain some of these topics is Dan Waslick, our tech correspondent from Blockchain Foundry. Dan, how you doing? Hey Nick, thanks for having me back. All right, Dan, to start us up, why don't you give us a state of the union on the status of the Load and AGX wallets and maybe the evolutionary path that took us from the desktop to the mobile wallet. The desktop wallet really started as a place for users to kind of generate an address for themselves and be able to register that address with the members portal. As we got a better understanding of what the user base needed, we realized that a simpler solution was probably a better solution. And so while the desktop wallet is still available to users for those who want some more of the power features of the platform, the mobile wallet is intended to be a simpler user experience that is easier to use and you can carry in your pocket. Both of them are equally secure. It's pretty much uh, just up to you as to if you're a power user and you want to leverage more of the complexities of the desktop wallet that's available for you. If you're someone who just wants to transact with AGX, the mobile wallet's probably better for you. Uh, both of them are equally secure and both of them, you can send tokens between mobile and desktop seamlessly. So Dan, given that at this present moment in time, uh, a member's load tokens can only be seen either from the member's dashboard or the mobile wallet, what is the purpose of the desktop wallet and when is it best utilized? So today's desktop wallet is really intended for um, what I would call the hardcore crypto people. Um, the desktop wallet is good when you don't want to have to trust data from outside sources to prove that your balance is what your balance is. If you want to go just off of the blockchain and nothing else, the desktop wallet is great. If you don't care so much about those aspects of it, then using the mobile wallet is just as good. The difference with the mobile wallet is that it requires a lot less uh, storage on your device and it provides you a simpler mechanism for remembering your private key and address. And so it really depends on your use case as to which one is better for you. But for most people, I think that the mobile wallet will be the best option. Um, and for those power users, the desktop, the desktop wallet is there for them as well. So Dan, you remember the very first wallet that we released was in fact the paper wallet. Uh, when is the best time to utilize this wallet? Right, so that's a good question. And you know, the best way I think to um, contextualize these different options is just like you would with money or dollars in your pocket. You can put dollars in a vault, you can put dollars in your wallet, and then if you lose your wallet out in the real world, you'll lose that many dollars. And you can also put dollars in you know, some, some place that you keep at home that isn't your vault and isn't your wallet, but is safe at home. And that's a good way to think about the options between desktop, mobile and paper wallet, right? Paper wallet is like putting your money in a vault somewhere. It's disconnected from the internet. It can't be hacked. As long as you put that somewhere secure, like in an actual physical vault or in like a safety deposit box, your funds are safe and cannot be compromised. Uh, if, we, if we scale that example out to a, a mobile wallet, mobile wallet's like, how much money would you be safe putting in your pocket and walking around with? That's what, that's what the mobile wallet's good for. And then the desktop wallet, think of it as how much money would you leave in a piggy bank at home, but not in a vault, not in, a, not in an actual safe. So you might put, let's say, $100 in your mobile wallet, $1,000 in your desktop wallet, and $100,000 in your paper wallet. Those are sort of the gradations of what the different solutions are good for, and they all have their place in a money ecosystem. So let's talk a little bit about this AGX Pay Wallet app. Uh, what makes this wallet in particular so innovative? Um, you know, in my opinion, I think that this wallet is really innovative because it combines aspects of public and private blockchains. Um, so, you know, we're reading load balances from Hyperledger, which is a private blockchain. Mm -hmm. And we're also reading AGX balances from public blockchains like Syscoin and other platforms that AGX will eventually uh, be distributed on. And that brings its own, uh, its own unique values to the equation. But on top of that, we're also integrating unique features from the platforms that AGX is distributed on, such as ZDAG for Syscoin, which enables 
uh, unique use cases like merchants and point of sale that would otherwise not be possible. Likewise, when AGX is distributed onto Ethereum or Tron, we may be able to introduce decentralized exchanges in ways that would not be possible with Syscoin itself. And so the way that the vision for the ecosystem is being mapped out and implemented in the wallet really makes it a, a unique offering and an innovative offering in a crowded marketplace, in my, in my opinion. So Dan, give us an insight here. In terms of roadmap, what can community members expect next from the uh, Load and AGX wallet experience? So what's next in the wallet development roadmap? Um, that's a good question because we have a lot of different features that we're trying to prioritize and we're trying to prioritize those alongside different pieces of user feedback we've gotten from the early test group. And so I think that probably the next thing you're going to see in short order is the ability to purchase silver cards directly through the wallet and redeem your silver card e-pins in the wallet for AGX. This is gonna be really um, useful because it allows people to keep the experience within the wallet app instead of having to go to a website, copy pins from emails into the wallet, et cetera. Um, and it enables more people to be exposed to AGX. Uh, I think other features that are near term are adding expanded capabilities for merchants. We want to enable merchants with the ability to add tips to their invoices and track those tips within their accounting systems. And we also are trying to activate Syscoin's ZDAG functionality in the wallet as soon as possible so that as merchants get more exposure to the system, they can make real use of it with the point of sale capabilities that ZDAG provides and accept AGX, in, in, accept AGX from users in real time directly at point of sale terminals. All right, Dan, last question. Are there any sort of parting words or thoughts that you'd like to share with the community with respects to wallets? Well, um, I think that we have a lot of really exciting features planned for the mobile wallet. And I would also encourage users, if they prefer using a desktop wallet, to share that feedback with us in, in the Telegram channel because all of these components are key components to a money ecosystem. And if you want to see more features in the desktop wallet or you want to see it improved in certain ways. We want to make those improvements. And so we're really looking to the community to help point us at what they, they feel will, will give them maximum value or improve the experience people have with AGX and load. And so uh, very much encourage everyone in our community to give us that feedback in the load telegram. Um, everyone on the tech team is, is watching that feedback, even if we don't always chime in. Um, and we're definitely taking that back to the development shop and making sure that that feedback gets into the uh, feature list that we're working against. All right, thank you for joining us. Cool, thank you very much, Nick. Have a good rest of your day. That's all we have for today's educational episode with Dan Waslick from Blockchain Foundry. So glad that you guys could join us. And as always, if this is your first time, please go ahead and check out our channel, as well as check out Load.1 to learn more about how Load is putting idle silver to work. That's all for today, guys, and take care.